and welcome to Gaming with Nocta. This video will show you how to get an excellent on each of the cooking challenges. I will also show you where to get the different special ingredients and how to get a high score so you get the most ingredients possible each time. Let's jump right in. First we have the easiest, which is chopping. Just hit the left stick down repeatedly until the ingredient is chopped, then hit the right stick down to grab another. This can be spammed without worry. Next we have the salt and pepper shakers. Just pull the corresponding stick down once the ring is as close to the circle as possible. Most recipes will have 4-5 to five rings to complete. Now we have the flambe. Rotate the left stick until you see purple swirls on the screen, then immediately stop rotating the left stick and pull the right stick down. A quick suggestion before the egg cracking is to get 3 excellence on other recipes before trying any of the eggs whatsoever. Um, you'll receive a ring that makes it easier to get an excellent on any of the cooking mini challenges. Just back out of the bistro and equip it. So the egg cracking is definitely the tricky one. You pull the sticks apart on your controller, but you pull them apart very carefully. Once the egg actually cracks, you need to continue pulling them apart. When the burst of pinkish purple swirls appear on the screen, that's when you'll hit the left and right bumper. This slow-mo will better show what I mean, just remember to not hit the bumpers until the big burst of purple appears. If you happen to come across any of the flan trials, your bistro will have the special menu unlocked. These recipes require you to complete mini game challenges in each of the different worlds. Getting a high score on all of these challenges is one of the requirements for the ultimate weapon, so you'll definitely want to do this. Getting a high score will give you three of that ingredient. Uh, each of these recipes require at least one, and the last recipe requires one of each of them. So you'll definitely want to try to stock up around six ish if you plan on having room for failure. These clips aren't in any particular order, but I definitely saved my least favorite for last. The clips will also be sped up for everyone's convenience. First stop is Arendelle at the mountain ridge. On your minimap, you'll see a sort of a cone leading off the edge. Jump off the mountain here and you'll find the grape flan. The trick to this one is honestly just destroying as many as possible. The game wants you to just reflect their magic and destroy them while they're frozen, get it. You'll earn a thousand points for each frozen flan you take down. You'll also receive around 500 to 650 points for each you take down otherwise. Use thunder, use large area attack form changes, or you can challenge yourself and only destroy frozen flan. Either way, you'll need 20,000 points for a high score. If you get lost easily like I do, I've also included a clip of just where to go after you finish this flan. Next up is everyone's favorite pirate world. Go to the Port Fort Waypoint and run into the courtyard for the watermelon flan. For this challenge, there are four cannons and a bell in the middle. Each time you hit a cannon, it will launch a cannonball. Hitting the bell will launch three consecutive shots from each of the cannons. Using the bell does have a cooldown period, so only use it when the big flan is flying around in the back. Uh, some tips are to dodge roll to the cannons, make sure you're not spamming your attack button, and just focus on which flan are getting close to the fort. You need 28,000 points for a high score here. We're off to the cityscape of San Francisco. Head to the South District Night Waypoint and we'll head to the Honeydew Flan. Up the building a couple jumps and you're there. For this challenge, you'll be jumping on Flan for points. You must continue bouncing as the challenge ends if you touch the ground. Immediately bouncing on the same Flan is not allowed as they start biting the air. After a few bounces, you'll notice one of the Flan, maybe more, is all shiny. My suggestion is to bounce on the shiny one as soon as possible, even if you haven't bounced on each flan yet. Each time you bounce, you go a little higher, and once you get too high up, you end up in the difficult to control skydiving animation. If you hit the shiny flan ASAP, then you'll just move to the next area. For this challenge, you'll need to have at least 15,000 points for a high score.
Now we're off to get bananas from Monstropolis. Just head to the door vault upper level waypoint. You'll have to do the grind rail, which by the way is a decent place to farm blazing gems. After that, run through the door, turn to your immediate right, and head through the other door. Make a U-turn, and it's banana time. For this challenge, keeping an eye on the big guy really is key. Dodging and keeping your distance is way more important than getting hits in. Each little flan will bite the dust with just one hit so you don't have to worry too much about them. They tend to cluster around the big flan, so Thunder is your friend. When you see the big flan jump up, just dodge roll until he lands. He can chain up to three attacks in a row. Form changes and grand magic are your friends as well. Form changing and finishers both turn you invincible for a little while. This is called iframes or invincibility frames. If you see the flan heading for you and you have one of these available, just use it to stay safe. By the end, they'll be spawning very quickly and you shouldn't have too much trouble getting 20,000 points for a high score. Just like after the grapes, this one can be kind of confusing to leave, so just follow this route to get back to a waypoint. It's time to go take pictures of oranges, pancakes, and flan in the Kingdom of Corona. Head to the Tower Waypoint and travel back through the caves. Right outside the cave, you'll find the orange flan. You'll need to have at least seven open spaces in your photo album to enter this Pokemon Snap challenge. If you do exactly what I do, then you'll get the high score no problem, but there are other ways to do it. Start by running left and waiting at this mountain cliff for some flan to spawn. You'll be standing there for a while, so just get ready. Uh, once they do start spawning, wait for all five of them to appear, let them do their little pose, and then take a picture of them. Next, you'll run over to this little tree, wait for the two that are up on the branch to fall down and turn into pancakes. Run over to this little pond and boop the orange that's waiting there. Uh, give him a second, he'll dry off, and then take a picture of him. Run behind you, uh, between these trees you'll see a flan looking at a butterfly. Wait for him to get as high up as he can go and then take a picture. Make your way back to the start, uh, stop off and take a picture of this guy doing the same thing with a butterfly. And then you'll run over to this guy holding a rabbit on his head. Wait for all of the birds to get on his hands, he'll do a little pose. Once he's standing still, take a picture. At this point, you already have enough for the high score, so you could take a picture of the ground or a rock, or you can just take a picture of a flan. All right, we only have two more to go. So head to the toy box rest area waypoint, and behind the couches, you'll see the strawberry flan. For this challenge, you'll need to run into the little flan on the ground and avoid the ones on balls. If you stay toward the middle of the map, then you'll do just fine. Pick up as many as you can and stay out of the way of the big ball in the middle. Reach 17,000 points and you have your high score. As you can see, I got this with 30 seconds to spare, so you'll do just fine. Last but not least, the Sour Cherry Flan. Head to Olympus Overlook Waypoint and run up the stairs. Past the Hidden Mickey, you'll see the Sour Cherry Flan. This one took me the longest and honestly made me rage the most. The steering is pretty limited and you'll often hit parts of the terrain that seem completely bogus. Hit as many little flan as you can and only hit enough arrows to keep you going. Being able to steer and continue on the course is your most important goal. The arrows will change your direction, but some of them are better than others. There are some arrows that you do not want to hit as they'll send you on less than favorable paths. The best advice I can give you is keep trying. If you're like me, this will be the most difficult challenge, but the most rewarding to get a high score on. Get 20,000 points and those cherries are yours. Congratulations! You've gathered all of the special ingredients and you're one step closer to getting your Ultima weapon. Like, comment, and subscribe to Gaming with Nocta for similar guides and videos. Have a good day!